This spirited man really wants to paint a word on the back of this chair, but he won't, because he did not buy this chair, did not pay for it. If he did paint a word onto the back of this chair, he'd have to replace the chair with a new one. And it's an expensive chair to replace. $250 more than he paid for his first car. Not adjusted for inflation. He wants to paint this word for a strange reason. An idea stolen from his mentor, from his teacher. Perhaps two ideas stolen from his mentor, from his teacher. And the ideas have something to do with channeling a master. The mentor hand-painted this name on the threshold of his, the mentor's, studio. This is not the mentor's name. It is the name of a master from long ago. Here's an old photo of the master's threshold from long ago. So who is this spirited man attempting to channel? And what does this Russian word have to do with money? He's attempting to channel this man, Andrei Tarkovsky, the great Russian filmmaker. Why? Because Tarkovsky brought us this character, the stalker. And sometimes this spirited man feels like the stalker. Or perhaps he aspires to be like the stalker. 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. When was the last time you saw that? This stalker is not the kind of stalker that you're thinking of. Not that kind, no. This stalker is a sort of guide. A sort of guide that this spirited man aspires to be. The stalker is a kind of artist. Maybe Stalker is a film about being an artist. So what sort of guide is this stalker? And what does this have to do with money? The stalker is a guide who brings desperate people to a place called the zone. This is how he makes his humble living, by guiding desperate people to the zone. The zone gives people hope. It is illegal to enter the zone. Lethal security guards the zone. The zone is a very strange place where time, space, and emotions bend reality. When we enter the zone, the film turns to color, like Oz. Though it is frightening and full of strange, enigmatic laws of physics that he doesn't quite understand, the stalker loves the zone. And why do desperate people, why do the writer and the professor want to visit the zone? Because within the zone, there is a place called the room. And inside the room, when one steps into the room, his deepest desire will be granted. The writer wants inspiration, so he thinks. The professor wants scientific discovery, so he thinks. Perhaps a Nobel Prize, so he thinks. But the stalker does not go into the room. The stalker is satisfied with leading others, the hopeless, into the room. But the stalker, why he never goes into the room. A stalker is forbidden from entering the room. 
especially for his own selfish reasons. What happens when a stalker enters the room? Well, we don't know exactly. But the stalker's teacher, another stalker called Porcupine, he went into the room. When Porcupine came out, left the zone, and returned to life outside the zone, Porcupine was suddenly filthy rich. It turned out that Porcupine's deepest desire, the thing he suffered most for, was just money. And when Porcupine realized that his deepest desire was simply money, why, he killed himself. This spirited man thinks it's very important to earn lots of money for himself. And this thought concerns him. The thing to do, perhaps, he thinks, is to be a stalker and guide people into the zone. In the end, none of the three goes into the room, but each of them seems to have reached some sort of epiphany or catharsis having experienced a journey through the zone. We watch them from inside the room. We're inside the room. And so, this spirited man will refrain from painting the Russian word on the back of the $900 Spanish chair because the chair belongs to Isabel, and he doesn't want to spend the $900 to replace it. The $900 will go to equipment for his interview set up for his Patreon and hopefully the Patreon brings in lots of money. Because it bugs him that he's refrained from painting Stalker in Russian on the back of his chair for the sake of money. <laughs>